are you preparing the next presentation, then watch this. Episode 11, prepare and practice. Most people don't take the time, they get in trouble, don't do that. Watch this to see how you do it right. Boom. How much time do I have? 10 minutes? I have to present in 10 minutes? Oh, crap. All right, I can, I can finish the last bits as I'm going to the meeting. I'll see you later, okay? Wish me luck. Twenty minutes later. I'm back. That didn't go too well. Yes, maybe I should have prepared a little bit more. Maybe I should have started earlier. <sighs> I hope I'm not going to get fired. <laughs> People, I just showed you one of the biggest problems when it comes to business presentations. Yes, you're busy. Yes, you have many other things to do. But preparing your business presentations in the last minute, winging it, not practicing, is not the path to success. So I'm here to show you there's a better, there's a different way of doing this. Watch this. Let's start with the beginning. In any business presentation, there's usually three parts. There's the script, there are the slides, and there's the stage. So the script is where you write down, you outline what you want to say, what are the key messages for the people in the room. And we have covered that in the earlier episode. Start with paper and use a structure. Take time to sit down and write out what you want to say before you open PowerPoint. Once you have your script, you go to PowerPoint and you create amazing slides that support your message that will bring it to life. Then you go on stage. And the stage can be a small stage in front of three people in the room. It can be a bigger room with 100 people and you have to present whatever it is that is in your presentation. Now, a couple of years ago, I was in a competition. So in Hong Kong, we have different kind of awards. And we also have um, the annual training trainer award, where you basically enroll and you have to present training programs you have designed, you have to show the design, you have to show how you rolled it out, and you have to show the results. And I got this very detailed outline on what they expected to hear and they wanted a lot of stuff. So I did exactly what I just said. I first sat down and said, all right, this is what they want. I have to cover all these things. Where do I find the information, the evidence, so I can actually make all this come to life? Once I had my script, I created the slides. And I remember when I had to go to the actual event, we had to go the day before. And people always ask me, how, how many slides do I need to, to, for this presentation? And for me, that's not a specific number, but I would never put a limit, as long as you can cover what you have in the time given. So I showed up the day before, and we had to like connect our computer and make sure everything worked. I connected my MacBook. I put up the deck and the girl in the room goes, wow, how many slides do you have? We had 15 minutes to present, one five, 15 minutes. I had 73 slides. And she went, oh, 73 slides, that's a lot. I said, yes, it's a lot, but I'm not gonna go over time. 
I said, how many slides do the other people have? Oh, normally 20 to 25. And they have a lot more bullet points. I said, I know, because I do this in a different way. Now, how did I know that I wouldn't go over time? Because I had practiced. And that brings me to the next point. Once I had created the slides, I went into a room and I practiced. And I did it again, and I did it again. And I practiced in front of a couple of other people, some of my colleagues, so they could give me feedback. But the other thing I did was, yes, I had one of these. This is old school stopwatch. But I timed myself so I knew exactly how long it took. Because one of the worst things you can do is, if you have 15 minutes, you do not want to spend 18. If you have five minutes, you do not want to spend eight. One of the biggest mistakes, again, because people haven't practiced, they just put stuff together in PowerPoint, they walk into a room and they start presenting. And you can see the boss going, uh, uh. I gave you five, and now it's eight. So time is important. So what is my point here? Get clear on the script. Take time to really write down what you want to say before you go into PowerPoint. Once you have the script, you create your amazing slides, then you practice. Let's talk about feedback. Feedback is gold. Recently I attended a leadership conference. It's a big conference and I get to go every year. I also get to help the speakers. So one of them is Joe. And a couple of weeks before the conference, Joe sends me an email and goes, Thomas, I would love your help. Could you have a look at my script? We meet, he shows me his script, a simple one page with the structure, the outline of what he wants to present on the day. And Joe has this mindset of, I'm doing a presentation and I, I want to know how I can be better. I want to do the best I can on that day. We look at the structure, we look at the key messages, and I gave him a few suggestions on how he can make it better. Joe is happy, he leaves. One week later, we meet again, and Joe goes, can I have your help? I would love for you to look at my slides and then see me practice. So I practice in front of you and you give me some feedback. Look at the slides, give him a few suggestions, and then Joe stands up and he presents the whole thing. And at the same time, Joe goes, you know what, time is important. Please make sure you record how long it takes. I want to make sure I don't go over time. I want to make sure I also spend the time I have to deliver this message. After he's done, I give him a few ideas on how he can improve, make a few adjustments, and then he leaves. Now, we spent more than an hour that evening. It was actually an evening where we got together to do this after work because Joe is committed. We get to the conference, Joe goes on stage, and the presentation is awesome. Yes, it rocked. Is Joe a great presenter? Yeah, he is. But he's a great presenter because he takes the time to prepare. He takes time to write the script. He does his own slides. He doesn't delegate. He does his own thing because this is his message. And then he practices before he goes on stage. Can you do that too? Yes, you can. And actually, Joe reminds me of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs spent hours and hours and hours before he did the big presentations because he wanted to get it right. He would even go on the proper stage and he would practice and he would look at the light, he would listen to the sound, he would check the carpet and he would make changes. Now, I get it, you might not have that attention to detail and that's okay. Less is okay, but my point is, you want to spend time on the script, you want to spend time on the slides and you want to spend time on the practice before you go on stage and get some feedback. I can see you. Yeah, there's always someone out there who goes, oh, feedback, ooh, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it because it's like people are criticizing me, ooh. I know a lot of those people who don't like feedback and I don't want to push you or force you to get feedback. But let me explain what feedback is. 
if you ask for feedback on your presentation, people will tell you what they like and they will tell you what you can do better. So the key here is you keep what they like and you change what they believe you can do better and the whole thing will go up and you will have a better presentation. But if you're not ready, let me tell you what to do instead. You still spend time on your script, you still spend time on the slides, and before you go on stage, practice. And the way you do that is you get into a room, you connect your presentation, so you do the whole thing. And then when you do it, you record yourself. Take your phone or any camera that can do video, record it. And at the same time, you use this little thing so you can time yourself, so you know exactly how long it takes. Once you're done, you take your little camera and you watch the video. And it will show you what you look like, it will show you what you sound like, and it will give you the whole experience so you can see what you need to adjust, whether you need to spend more time here, or slow down the speed of your talk, you might be speaking too fast. Whatever it is, it will help you make adjustments. It will also show you if you have some of those funny body gestures. Some people are like scratching their ear, some are scratching their nose, some people are like swaying back and forth. All kind of stuff is going on. You will catch that on camera and you can then adjust. Then you do it again. Same thing. How many times? I suggest five times for the big stuff. It would also help you build confidence because the more you do your presentation, the more comfortable you're going to be when you go on stage because I've done it before. I know the flow, I know my slides, I know what, where to be punchy and where to do this and do that. Boom. Yeah. Can you do that? Yes, you can. There's no excuse. So even if you don't like feedback, at least use the camera. Boom. One more thing on the camera. Ah, ah, is that really me? Yeah, it is really you. And I know a lot of people who are uncomfortable watching themselves because it's like, do I really look like that? Do I really sound like that? Yeah, you do. And this is what everyone else is watching every day. That is that version of you. So get used to it. Trust me, I have done a lot of videos and I didn't like when I initially started recording. I was like, Ugh. but you get over it. So use the camera to record yourself and then make adjustments. You will be better. We have covered the big presentations where you have a bit more time to prepare and practice. Now we're gonna talk about the smaller one the ones that come up now and then when you least expect it. So imagine this, it's Monday morning, you have arrived in the office, you're sitting down, you have a fresh cup of coffee and you're reading emails, it's 9 a.m. And suddenly, beep, 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 beep. Hello, hi boss, yes boss. Uh, this afternoon, four o'clock, four, four, four o'clock, board presence, five minute board update. <gasps> Really? But I have all these meetings and stuff to... Okay, 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 boss, yes, okay, bye. Your boss calls and you've been asked to go in front of the board four o'clock this afternoon with a five minute update on this exciting project that your team is working on. What do you do? Now, I would take a one piece of paper and I would use the form that we have on the website, link below. It's called the one page memo. And it's from Procter & Gamble. They've been using it for many, many years. Why? Because it works. It has five steps. You start with one catchy headline for the idea. You explain the background. Then you move on to how it actually works. You outline the key benefits and you finish with next steps. Now you apply that and you have a very solid structure that is easy to follow and it makes sense. So I would take that and I'll write down my key points, follow the rule of three, and then I would take it and I would practice it. So I would sit in my office or hide in the toilet or go somewhere and just speak it out, kind of like just get in the flow and understand and kind of like get comfortable with my script. So when you walk into the room four o'clock, 
you know what you're talking about and you have an outline and it makes sense. How many times do you practice this? As many as you can, but I would say five. And if it is a five minute pitch, it shouldn't take that long. There's no excuse. But using that piece of paper would help you when the shit hits the fan and you do not have the time to spend hours on a script and hours on nice pretty PowerPoints and you don't have time for feedback and a lot of practice. Use that paper, boom. It will make you sound smarter and people will say thank you. That was great. Yes, this was episode 11, prepare and practice. I cannot talk enough about this because I see people get in trouble every week because they haven't taken the time to do it. I don't want that to be you. So whether you're doing a small thing in your local little meeting or you're doing a bigger thing at a conference, take the time to prepare and practice and you will be better. And if you don't have time to stand up and practice five times, then do three times. Just do something that will make you better than what you are today. I'm Thomas Bay, also known as Coach Bay. Next week I will be back with the last episode, episode 12 in this series of presenting at work. Until then, like, subscribe and use the links below, free tools that will help you to do better presentations at work. Stay tuned, I will be back. Peace.